and welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly Buck. I'm Tori, here with my co-host Nicole. As always, we have a very entertaining show for you today, so let's get right into it. Rapid fire, ready? Wait, what? What's two plus two? Oh god, not this again. Wrong answer. The correct answer was five. I definitely don't think that's right. Well, who's the one in advanced math? It's actually me. I'm the junior in pre-calc honors. Well, let's just send this over to Anthony's first edition of 37 questions, so I don't embarrass myself even further. Hey boys, I'm Chris Dempsey, and today we're interviewing Anthony Asenzi. Anthony Asenzi, wake up. Ah! Oh my god! It's time for your 37 questions. Oh my... Really? Yeah. Oh, well, let's get to it then, I guess. Alright, let's go. Alright, let's go! So... What's your first question? Anthony, how are you doing today? Uh, well, you know, I could be doing better, you know? Uh, I woke up this morning and there's like a mirror next to my bed, so I just woke up and I saw myself and uh, I cried and then my mom came in and said, SHUT UP ANTHONY! YOU GOTTA STOP CRYING! WHY ARE YOU CRYING ALL THE TIME? And I'm like, MOM, THINGS HAVE BEEN SO HARD SINCE DAD LEFT! WHY IS HE COMING BACK FROM THE GAS STATION? SHE SAID, SHUT UP! And then she came to me and went, bah, bah, bah. So, you know, I'm not doing too great today. What is your morning routine? Uh, didn't I just tell you? Okay. <laughs> Freaking dingus. How many years ago did your dad leave? Uh, he went to the gas station 10 years ago. What was he trying to get from the gas station? Oh, uh, well, you said he was going to the gas station. How am I supposed to know? Whatever it takes me t I don't know. Whatever you do, whatever you get at the gas station that takes you 18 years, I don't know. Shut up, Chris. Anthony, how's your love life going? What love life? <laughs> <laughs> Anthony. Yeah? I forgot what I was going to say. Is that your next question? Yeah. I have, I don't have a lot of time here. I'm on the run. What do you want to do when you grow up? Uh, wow. You saying I'm a kid? You saying I'm a kid, kid? I'll tell you what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be a millionaire. And how are you going to be a millionaire? What are your goals in life? My goal in life is to blow up and then act like I don't know nobody. <laughs> Next question. Next question, What Chris. is your favorite drink? My favorite drink, chicken. Yeah. Okay. What is what is the shirt? What is the shirt? Like what is what is the twenty four six oh one? To be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand the reference that this shirt makes. I'm snickling just now, thinking about how a uh, simpleton wouldn't even get the reference on my shirt. Can you imagine them scratching the tops of their heads as they fail to understand the nuance of my fashion sense? What is your opinion on the ruffles though? Like from the Shrek movie? No, like the story. Like this, not the Shrek version, like the story itself. Rumpel still, well, he's kind of creepy, isn't he? So, all right, no, put the, put, the, put it to me. So Rumpel Stiltskin, right? So the story, this woman, I think she has like a child, right? I don't know why she was dealing with Rumpel Stiltskin. I can't tell you for the life of me, but whatever it was, it can't possibly be a very good excuse. Because here comes Rumpel Stiltskin. He's in like comes in like that, Mr. Rumpelstiltskin, why would you want to deal with that guy? And he's like, well, uh, uh, long story short, I remember that Rumpelstiltskin was going to kill her kid unless he, like, unless she figured out his name. Okay. Why would you deal with that? All right, hey, you cut me off. Why would you deal with that kind of guy? The story doesn't really make a lot of sense, you know, when you think about it. But anyway, that's my opinion on Rumpelstiltskin. Okay, next question. Yeah? What is your favorite song? My favorite song? Uh, Party Rockers, of course. Okay. Somebody once told me da da da. Somebody once told me my dad would be back in the gas station. Okay. What is your opinion on mac and cheese? Somebody should be mac and cheese? Uh, I mean, come on. You People have standards. You know? Like, people, you know, you're out there living I don't by know. yourself. You know, you're in your little bachelor pad, you're in an apartment. And I get that life might not be the best for you right now. But have some standards, for God's sake. Please, respect yourself. Seriously, don't eat mac and cheese. Yeah. Sorry, Anthony, if you yeah. could describe your life in one hashtag, what would it be? Um, okay. Hashtag. Hashtag. Give me a second here. Give me a moment. Give me a sec. Hashtag. 
Hashtag. We're gonna do. Anthony. Yeah. If you could just. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. No. We're using. Okay. Anthony, answer the question. Give me a second. Give me a sec. I'm looking up. All right. Let's see. Let's type in famous. Let's see if that gives us anything. Um. My my hashtag would be. Hashtag art. What is your favorite class in school? My favorite class, um, spy. That's my favorite class. What is it? Spy. Okay. What is your opinion on Fortnite? Dude. <laughs> Wait, stop. stop. Chris, come here. Come here. Just come, just come a little closer. <laughs> okay. Are vans actually off the wall? What do you mean? Like they're slugging. Are they actually off the wall? They're on the floor, Chris. Okay. Anthony, next question. Can you please do the Vans challenge for me? What's the Vans challenge? Can you flip your shoe? Let's see if it Alright. We're gonna flip the van right now. Really flip it though. Let's just chuck that van. Why is he? Bruh. 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 Oh my god, I think I got a hernia. Chris! <laughs> come, come here. Come here, Chris. Chris. Yeah. You did this to me. Do the, uh, carry me. Push me down this I hall. Push down. me, drag me. Thank you. That's going to conclude questions with Anthony. Tune in uh, next week for a friend. Keep going. I didn't tell you start. See you next time. Tune in next time for an episode of Gamers Quick. Goodbye. Like I said before, Anthony never fails to provide quality entertainment. If you can even call it that. Hey, you know what actually is entertaining though? What? Guess. Can I get a hint? It's a sport. Oh, it's um that like that you dribble that circle orange thingy and you shoot it into like the orange other circle thingy. Basketball, Nicole. It's called basketball. You actually play this sport. You should you should know. Same difference. Well, speaking of basketball, the NBA playoffs are coming up. Oh yeah, and of course our resident basketball experts Nick and Dane have offered their predictions for this year's tournament, so let's take a look. Hello everybody and welcome back. No, this is not Q's Conversations, but he's still Nick Victory, I'm still Dane Richardson. And today we're going to give you a little bit of an NBA playoff preview. First off, Nick, getting right into it, your Miami Heat are on the outside looking in in the Eastern Conference playoff picture. It's D. Wade's last year. How are you going to remember him as a player? I'm going to remember him as... Probably the best star in this era. He took money, less money to get Bosch and LeBron there to win extra rings for his team. He's been a great man, great person. He's my favorite player of all time. It's really sad to see him go. Yeah, D. Wade, uh, you remember he won those couple championships with LeBron and Chris Bosch when they went to South Beach. Dirk Nowinski with the Dallas Mavericks also could potentially be his last year. They're, not, they're also not in the playoff picture, but him and D. Wade actually matched up a few times in the finals going one and one against each other. Um, so nice little matchup right there. Switching to the teams that are in the playoff picture this year, again atop the Western Conference, Nick, the one-seeded Golden State Warriors. Do you think anyone could beat them this year? I don't think there's anybody that can even take them to six games. I think Houston might have a small chance to take them to six, but I think it's going to be sweep after five-game series, sweep after sweep for the Warriors. They're as good as they were last year, and they added Boogie. And Boogie can turn on at any time. He can drop 30 at any point in any game. So. I don't see anybody even coming close. Boogie really the X Factor. Of course, it's really hard to three-peat in any of the big four sports, but the Warriors trying to accomplish that. They've won three out of the last four titles. An interesting thing you could see, though, Oklahoma City Thunder. They've been struggling a little bit of late in the second half of the year. They could still potentially get the eighth seed, and that's a must-watch. Russell Westbrook, yeah. Paul George against Steph Curry and KD in the first round. Yeah, I really would like to see that happening, especially a Durant-Westbrook rivalry. That would be very fun to watch in a series. Might get a couple of fights in there. Yeah. You never know. Uh, you see play, a playoff P again, as we did last year, and then he yeah. kind of shut it off towards the end. But OKC, okay, so they might be able to tell, take him six games also. I mean, I guess probably five. Bit. Yeah. yeah but. Another interesting matchup I see, kind of the 4-5 right there. Portland Trailblazers, Dame Lillard, CJ McCollum looking for revenge after they got swept by Boogie and AD in the New Orleans Pelicans last year against Quentin Snyder's Utah Jazz. Now, I'm going to say this right off the bat. I love the Utah Jazz. They've really heated up in the second half. Quentin Snyder, he coaches 
very good coach. Donovan Mitchell's playing great of late. Rudy Gobert, Joe Ingles. Yeah. They moved the ball pretty well. I think the Jazz beat Portland and pushed the Warriors to six games. Call me crazy, Nick. I think it's Dame time. I think him and McCollum get a vent, uh, eventual loss from last year after getting swept by uh, the Pelicans and Anthony Davis. Obviously, the Pelicans aren't in it this year, so unless Joe Ingles drops 30 a game, then the Jazz aren't going to win. Who says Joe Ingles won't drop 30 a game? Joe Ingles is the greatest player in the league, so I don't great, know. Great Aussie right there. Another surprising thing you're seeing at the top of the Western Conference, the two-seeded Denver Nuggets. How deep of a run do you think they can make? I don't think they're going to make a very deep run. I think they might get knocked out in the first round by the seventh seed or in the second round by the three seed because they don't have much playoff experience other than uh, Paul Millsap, a little bit by Jokic, but their only star is Nikola Jokic. Everybody else seems kind of like a role player, and during the playoffs, you really need those stars. They could have some home court advantage. Right now, they're matched up against the San Antonio Spurs in the first round. I think they can win that. But uh, again, like you mentioned, no playoff experience against teams like the Warriors and Rockets. I really think that could be tough for them. Switching to the Eastern Conference, sitting atop of the throne is Giannis Antetokounmpo's Milwaukee Bucks. Chris Middleton, another all-star there. How deep of a run do you think Milwaukee can make? Mike Budenholzer, um, great coach, came yeah. over from Atlanta when they made those runs without Horford. Really spreading it out, spacing. A lot more spacing, shooting more threes. Again, how deep of a run do you think they can make? I think they're going to make the Eastern Conference Finals, and I think they're going to lose to the Toronto Raptors and Kawhi Leonard. I think they'll beat the Celtics, because the Celtics just seem off this year. The chemistry is very off. But Giannis is going to win MVP, probably. Brooke Lopez is shooting the lights out as a center. He's very tough to guard. And Chris Middleton's been playing really good, so I can see them going pretty deep. Giannis Antetokounmpo, my MVP pick. What do you think? I think he's going to win MVP as well. MVP. But you told me earlier, you don't think Milwaukee's going to be the team that comes out of the Eastern Conference. Who do you think? I think it's going to be Toronto. I think Kawhi's going to lead them there. And I think Kawhi's going to leave for the Clippers after he leads them to the finals and gets swept by the Warriors. But uh, Kawhi Leonard, Pascal Siakam, uh, OJ Anunobi, Danny Green, they're all very great players, great defenders, great three-point shooters. I, don't, I think they're going to be a tough team to beat. Pau Gasol in the Milwaukee Bucks and Marc Gasol in the Toronto Raptors, potentially a Gasol-Gasol matchup in the Eastern Conference Finals. You just mentioned Pascal Siakam. I really like his development. He's becoming a very good small forward slash power forward for Toronto. A dark horse, however, I see in the Eastern Conference, the Philadelphia 76ers. It's very hard to match up against Joel Embiid on the low yeah. block. He's a great scorer down there. If J.J. Reddick's hot. Jimmy Butler's big time in late game situations. Ben Simmons, great passer, Tobias great Harris. defender. Tobias Harris, I forgot about him. That's a great pickup for Philly. How do you think they match up against the other teams in the East? They probably have the best roster, but Ben Simmons not being able to shoot at the point guard position really hurts them because it's kind of like a four on five on offense because you see teams sink down way to the almost the rim when they're guarding him. They'll let him shoot from anywhere outside of five feet and he can't hit anything. So. It's kind of like a four on five on offense. Embiid's going to really have to come up big. I think Boban is going to have to have some big minutes coming when Embiid sadly can't be on the court for that long because he gets tired easily. Mm -hmm. So Boban's going to be big. Reddick's going to have to shoot the lights out, and Jimmy Butler's probably going to have to drop 25 a game. Everyone loves Boban, right? One of the things I want to watch out for in the East, the 4-5 matchup most likely, Boston against Indiana. I know Indiana, their star player Victor Oladipo got hurt, but Nate McMillan, he coaches good basketball. They got Bogdan, Bogdanovich, I believe, yes. or Bojanovic, yes. they're one of the two, but he's a very good shooter. Indiana, they're a fundamentally sound basketball team. Boston, however, they do have Kyrie Irving. That's just an interesting series. You guys should tune into that one. Sadly. <laughs> It won't matter because both of them will lose to Milwaukee. Yes, as now we make our predictions. Who do you, you just said who's coming out of the East? You said Toronto? Toronto. Who are they beating? They're going to beat the Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals. I have the Bucks beating the Raptors in seven games in the Eastern Conference. Who's your Western Conference pick? The Warriors. Over. Anybody. <laughs> All right. I have the Warriors over the Rockets in six games. Toronto, Golden State, who you got? Golden State in four. All right, he's uh, very predictable right here. Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Bucks throughout the past two years have given the Golden State Warriors lots of matchup problems. I don't think anyone on that team can really guard Giannis Antetokounmpo, and the Milwaukee Bucks are going to push the Golden State Warriors to a seven-game series. Do not laugh at me, but the Warriors will pull it out. So, Nick, that'll wrap up our NBA playoff preview. After uh, the NBA season, there's not really much basketball to talk about, but we really like to work on our game at the local Shapiro Park. So... He's Nick Victory. I'm Dave Richardson. Catch us next time. I can't believe you just said that. You know, I think Nick and Dane are really sleeping on the Sixers. The disrespect is absurd. 
Yeah, I definitely think they're sleeping on a lot of teams, like the Knicks. Um, I would agree with you if the Knicks were actually making the playoffs and weren't like the worst team in the league. Um, well, that's all the time we have for today. Tune in next week for another episode of the Weekly Buck. Have a great week, Oswego. Hey,